Hello, everyone. It's Thursday, and we're back on. We took a week off last week. Um, we had a little problem with internet, meaning I didn't have any. Uh, I was moving last week, and the Comcast cable man showed up in the afternoon. You know, you get that window of midnight to 1 a.m., even though that's not possible. Um, but yes, the window came, and it was after our 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I could not do a webinar last week, uh, but we are back today, and I'm so excited to be back. Uh, I truly try to make my schedule around this particular webinar, but I could not stop it. I could not stop Comcast last week, so we were off. But we're back with many things to talk about. Uh, we've got a great number of people here, as always. Um, the attendees are up near 200, at least signed up, so I think that's fantastic. I love being here. And like I said, we've got a few things to talk about. I'll minimize that and let's get started. First thing, though, we're going to talk about, we've got a couple things. First thing we're going to talk about today is the FXCM problem. Wow. Got a, I got a, actually emails from other people, but obviously saw it on the internets that FXCM is shutting down all operations in the United States of America. Now, why are they doing that? Well, let's get into it. As background, just so you know, let's talk about my personal personal time, life, trading. I was very happy with TradeStation, and I was with TradeStation for a long time. Um, shoot, 2010, 2009, something like that. I'd have to search my memory banks, but a long time. Then we had a debacle last year, last February 2016. They stopped, they ceased their Forex, but they keep everything else. So I had to switch madly over to OANDA, MT4, and or multi-charts. Um, I was very happy. I was very sad to have to make that change. However, I became, in, in a relatively short period of time, very, very happy with OANDA and very, very happy with MT4, despite its little quirks. Once you get MT4 working, it's amazingly stable. The key, obviously, is getting it up and running, as some of you may attest. It's sometimes difficult to get everything because it's a little bit, a little bit persnickety, but that's another topic for another day. I'm very happy with OANDA. Now, the interesting part about the two brokers that I've used extensively are TradeStation and OANDA. If you look up your brokers and their capitalization, they're pretty well capitalized, at least the last time I checked, meaning that they have money in reserves, meaning they won't go belly up or bust. Some brokers offer these great deals, these great spreads, and hedging, and FIFO, and I remember friends of mine went overseas, and there's Australian brokers and Greek brokers, and not that Australian brokers are bad, because there are many that are good, but I think this particular one in Australia was doesn't exist anymore, if memory serves, and I know that the ones in Greece don't exist anymore. So anyway, they got great deals, and then all of a sudden now you're stuck, like the online poker people, with accounts that you can't get to because the broker is gone. However, if you have a well-funded broker, the chances are much better that it doesn't go belly up. However, well, anyway, before I make my however point, that's why I'm very happy with those two. Besides the fact customer service was good and I could run my robots, I trusted the fact they'd be there tomorrow. But as it says on the slide, FXCM was well-funded too, at least I thought. I did not think FXCM was going to be one that disappeared. But as it turns out, it did disappear, and funding wasn't the problem. If you read online, they were cheaters, and I hate to talk bad about them, but I allegedly, allegedly, they were manipulating account their clients' accounts or taking the other side or whatever they said. It was not on the up and up. They got in trouble for not treating their clients properly, I suppose is the best word, they were fined $7 million, and they were banned from the United States. So that all happened in the last seven days. So FXCM is no longer an option in the U.S., and I've had lifetime members, even though I highly recommended not using anything but OANDA. Why do I recommend nothing but OANDA? Because that's what I know. I only <laughs> recommend stuff that I know. I don't take anyone else's word for it in anything. I have to experience it for myself. And OANDA works fine for me. So that's why I recommend it. I've never tried FXCM, so I did not recommend it. A lot of people liked it for various reasons. However, they did not run the robots exactly the same because they had different servers. So I was very much against FXCM. I've spent 
multiple hours, 10, 12, 15 hours, trying to make my robots work on their servers that they offered. It was reasonably successful, like 95% successful. But um, the bottom line is I wasn't pleased with FXCM because of how they ran robots, but that was a pretty selfish way to look at it. However, it's gone now. So what are you going to do? What does that mean to us, you, me, anyone else watching? Well, it means, and this is something that we all have to talk about, even though broker talk is always my least favorite thing to talk about. It means that keeping all of our money in one place might be a bad thing. TradeStation is well capitalized. Oanda allegedly is too. Again, you can only take what's online, right? What's online is just what they put online. I mean, how do we know? Oanda, how much money you have in your bank? I mean, I don't think they'll tell us. Um, but keep, but as, even if they're well capitalized, keeping it all in one place might be a bad thing. I, as I understand it, what I've been told is that FXCM accounts are being transferred to Forex.com. Again, I have no actual knowledge of this. So people, hopefully, please, please, please tell me that you're not losing your accounts, you're just transferring, and that you're able to reach the money in your accounts, which I assume if they did something bad to their clients, they shouldn't keep the money too. What are they, Enron? But anyway. So I'm hoping that no one is hurt, but again, if you're running my robots, I recommend Oanda only um, because that's what I use and know that, that will operate properly. That doesn't stop the question, though. Is it a bad idea to keep all our money in one broker? All my trading money right now is in Oanda, in MT4. Um, is that a bad thing? Did FXEM try to teach us a lesson that this is a bad thing? Um, it's something we need to think about, but my recommendation, if you're looking for a new broker, if you have an FXCM problem and you're looking for a new broker, don't bargain shop. Don't try to find the tricky one or the best deal. That's just my opinion. Go with the biggest and the best. Go with people that you can look them up online and see if they're capitalized. Look them up online and see if they have a presence. Have they been around for a long time? And Oanda and TradeStation both have done just that. Multi-charts too, even though that's just a trading platform, not a broker. Got it. Go with the biggest, the best, who's been around the longest, and then hope your broker doesn't, you know, mess around and do any funny business. Okay. So we've talked about it. I don't have any great solutions except find something better, right? And I'm very sorry for anyone who went through it. But all that talk leads us to why I looked at a futures chart yesterday. If you read my Wednesday blog post, um, and I was able to get the Wednesday blog post out. Um, via internet at a hotel, um, but anyway, um, and actually I had internet, never mind, <laughs> who cares how I set the post out, I did it, uh, this is why I looked at futures yesterday, why, well, what if we didn't put all our eggs in one basket, what if we did a little Forex at Oanda, assuming you chose that, and maybe a little Futures at TradeStation. Now we'd be splitting our money between two different brokers, increasing the likelihood that we wouldn't get screwed over by one particular broker. Or heck, we could even do stocks at TradeStation, although that's still one broker. I got you, but it'd be, I think, different um, segments of that broker, so it might be safer, or stock somewhere else. I mean, what if we diversified out and spread it around? Does that solve the FXCM problem? Well, it's something to consider. I mean, I don't want to spread out necessarily because I feel good about Oanda, but will we ever know <laughs> our broker is good or bad or ugly or anything else? Okay. Now, if this quote-unquote diversifying, meaning putting your eggs in several baskets, meaning brokers, if it does sound interesting to you, then yesterday's post was interesting, and if you haven't read it, then go ahead and read it. And I have gotten a lot of feedback, got a lot of feedback on this one, more so than normal. And if you haven't read it, here's the quick version. Instead of the normal way I did it, which is I look at a robot, see what its drawdown is, see what its profit is, and then expand it out. Well, if I increase trade size, will that meet my monthly bills? And so on. It's like I work from the robot outward and then eventually settle on, okay, what do I, what size do I need to use to get it to my monthly goals? Well, yesterday, as I said in the post, I reversed that. I just said, I need this amount of money. And then I went backwards. And furthermore, 
I didn't care how much I traded. I'm constantly looking at from the beginning, from the beginning of me creating my very first robot, I was looking at how often it trades, how often it trades. Because why? More trading equals more money, right? If I make $10 a trade or $100 a trade or $1,000 a trade, I need more of that. More trades equals more money. That's the way I've always kind of looked at it, right? Until lately, and specifically this past week. Well, what if we just said, I need X. I need $1,000 a month or 2000 or, you know, multiply it out. I need 10000 a month. And what if I said, okay, I don't care how much I trade. I just need blank a month. But I went one step further. I don't care that I get it every month. I just need a chunk of money that will spread out maybe for the whole year. And I had the premise, the hypothesis in my mind, what if one trade, what if I just took one trade a year Heaven forbid we as traders only traded one time in 12 months. We're not traders, we're losers. But anyway, but that was my hypothesis. What if I took just one trade a year, but that met that met all my monthly goals, but not monthly, annually. So if I needed $10,000 a year to pay a certain bill or all my bills, whatever, I know that's probably low, but bear with me. If I needed 10000 what if I only took one trade, but it made $10,000? Again, we'd have to figure out how we're going to disperse that and what, how would we pay our bills if we weren't trading and all that, right? We can get into that. I'm going to get into that. But let's just say, right? Let's just say we only traded once and it met all of our, met all of our needs. Wouldn't that be crazy? I mean, wouldn't that be every single dream, right? One of my favorite books of all time, absolutely changed my life, Tim Ferriss's 4-Hour Workweek. Absolutely got me thinking in a different direction 10 years ago whenever it came out. That's less, <laughs> that's practically, if you trade one time a year, that's not four hours a week. That's one trade that lasts 19 days or whatever, or six days or seven days, and that's it. And if you're trading a robot, you don't even work those days. I mean, that's no work. And yet all of our bills are paid. Anyway, the short version is at the trade size, I was using trade sizes um, because it was a futures and I have to trade a full contract. I was using an account size over 25000 uh, uh, actually above 30000 And when you use a thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 account, just pick one, one of those, you average about 35% a year. Or in my blog post, I, saw, I talked about 1580 bucks a month. Now it came in a chunk but it averaged out to 15.80 a month and it averaged 3.4 trades a year over a de over a decade it was like 13 years i think something like that i mean isn't that crazy i just i i wanted to go over that again and just i can't believe how crazy that is you, are you telling me i don't have to do anything and i could get all my bills paid to take one trade a year or an average of 3.4 trades a year let's just say you did that right i'm just curious how many people, if people came, let's say you quit your job and you, this is how you're going to trade. I know it's crazy. All right, I know. What if you did and someone says, what do you do for a living? You said, I trade for a living. That's what I do. Oh, yeah? Well, what are you doing today? Nothing. <laughs> what did you do last month? Nothing. What have you done for the last six months? Nothing. And it pays all your bills? Yes. I mean, that conversation is just, I, don't, I can't even tell you. It's just out of the possibility in my little brain. But guess what? I like change and I like learning things and I'm going to absolutely look into this more. I've already started testing on three or four more futures contracts that all are pretty similar. Uh, drawdowns, I think, were a little bit bigger than the one we talked about, the Australian dollar. But gosh darn it, isn't that crazy? Would you trade like that? I want to answer. Just think about it. And if you wanted a picture, here's... Here's the ADH, the ad ADH that I tested on. Um, I think I got my slippage in and my commissions right. I always put slippage in. Um, but again, I haven't traded this live, so I can't tell you for sure, but I put a ton in. But here, here's an example. Here's my fair value, right? We use the fair value principles from the fair value course. Price went well above fair value, took a trade. It kept going the wrong direction, took another trade, and then um, transferred out for about a thousand bucks trade or whatever it was. Uh, I forget what it was actually. What did I say it was? About a, oh, it was uh, between a thousand and two thousand bucks, right? Short was different than long. Uh -huh. Sorry. 
So that ends out, that's about $2,000 trades there. If you look at it, well, I mean, I can tell you if you wanted to know. I know you read the post yesterday. And this is from 2001 to 2017. You can see that um, the winners were, well, look at this. Look at this trade. This was like 8000 So I went for much more than that. I think I went for like 7000 bucks a trade for this one. Anyway, who cares about that? Silly nonsense. You can read it in the post. But here's a long trade that made several thousand. Oh, look, I'm done for the year. And then if we transfer, I just wanted to show you short trade. Doesn't take a lot of short trades, mostly long. But here are some recent trades. These are 2017 trade, right? It went back to fair value. And then once it started moving back towards, it went away from fair value. Once it started moving back toward, it took a trade, which actually turned out it took this trade right close to fair value, but that's acceptable. And there's another one there and so on and so forth. So that was what we talked about yesterday. Love to get you thinking in different ways. I want to try to solve, help you solve this problem, but you've got to be open-minded just like I am. <laughs> you've got to be open-minded. I know it's not easy, but you've got to be open-minded to figure out new possible solutions, right? So there you go. Now, that all being said, let's change gears and, and talk, to to talk about topic number two. I want to talk about the spread problem. Again, totally unrelated. New topic, bad segue. The downside, after I, pr I sang the praises of Oanda, the downside of Oanda for me, it's the only one so far, is that at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the spreads go buck wild on my Oanda platform. Not all the time, but a lot of the time, most of the time. Now, in TradeStation, I was able to code around it, not me particularly, but I had my programmer do it, where we could manipulate the sessions so that trading stopped for me at 4.57 and then started back up again at 5.03. So instead of stopping at 5 p.m. in the crazy time, it would just stop a little early and then pick it back up. That solved the problem for me on TradeStation. I don't have a, a problem for that or a solution for that right now. Right now, hold the phone. I haven't up to date had that a solution for that problem. When it gets when I take an exact trade that happens at exactly 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I am subject to getting in at a big spread or a big change from what I thought I was getting in. Sometimes, as it says here, the spread has gone up to 15, 18, 20 pips on the Euro Aussie, for example. So I think I'm getting in at 1.1 thousand, and I actually get in at 20 pips higher or 20 pips lower. That's not fun at all. Think about it. If we're looking for, and we're trading a day trading system now that goes for small profit targets, if we're going for 10 or 15 pips of profit, let's say, and the 20 pip spread nails us right when we entered, then if it goes 15 pips like it's supposed to, but it's a 20 pip spread, it will get out when the spread calms down and it will not it will not possibly be in profit. In other words, all that mumbo jumbo means, of course, that if we take a trade exactly 5 p.m. Eastern and there's a huge spread on it, we may have what looks like a positive trade that's actually negative in our bank accounts or our trading accounts. That's not good, that's not fun. And has it happened to me? Yes. Has it happened a lot? No. But it has happened. And it happened a, a while ago. Not too long ago, actually, but a while ago. So what can we do about that? Trade Station, I told you my solution. Well, here's our solution. <laughs> we could just turn the robot off every day at 5 p.m. and turn it back on when the spread calms down 15 to 30 minutes later. Well, I mean, that would do it, right? You wouldn't be taking trades in that monstrous, crazy time. You would just be trading when the spreads calm down. You know, that's not great, though. I mean, the reason we use robots is to not do that. Or we could build something into our robot so it doesn't take spray, spr <laughs> sprays. It doesn't take sprays or treads with, treads with sprays. Trades with spreads. <laughs> it doesn't take trades when it gets too high, right? If we build that in, it was, oh, a 20 pip spread, no can do. That might solve that problem, right? What I worry about, though, is if you do something like that, what if the trade was actually profitable? What if it gets in a trade with a 20 pip spread, but it lasts a long time? The spread calms down, and it's a small profit, right? It's not as big as if we had a normal spread. But what if, by eliminating taking trades, I'm eliminating some profit, right? That's the concern. That's my problem. 
However, um, I had Wes built build a spread inhibitor, meaning exactly that. I had a version of my Hornet robot that will not take trades if the spread gets over X. And I'm actually trading it live now. So if it works the way I want it to, and I'm looking to see if it doesn't take trades at wild times, and I'm also looking to see if that trade possibly could have been turned out profitable. It's going to be tough to check that, but I'm still going to try. I'm just going to see how it works out. If it works the way it was programmed to do, then anyone trading the Hornet, I'll make that available to you. But like always, I want to try it myself first. I don't want to risk your money. I want to risk my own money on it first. So I am trading it live. The Euro Aussie is trading live in my account, and we're going to check it out. So that may be an answer to the spread problem. But as I said, this is the only problem I've had with Oanda. So conquering this would kind of be a big deal. So just wanted to share that with you. Uh, I have gotten an email or two from people who have asked this question. Um, so to those people and anyone else, I'm on it. I'm trading it. And we should have an answer soon and just need a couple trades. So what else can we talk about? Oh, speaking of spreads, <sighs> I'm going to get angry. I'm not going to get angry. People always say, and who are these people? Just online gurus or webinars or books, any whatever. People say, your results in the real world are always going to be worse than your testing. If people, especially if people are anti-backtesting and you know who they are. They say, you can backtest all you want, but in the real world, it's always going to suck. And everybody backtests and it never works. <laughs> okay. Well, I've always said, those people who say your back testing will never be as good as real world have cower maneuver breath. Cower maneuver. <laughs> yep, cower maneuver breath. They have bad breath. I don't think that's a very good insult, but it's the first thing I came up with when I was writing the slide. Um, I have worked very, very hard to put enough trading costs, spread, commission, whatever, I put as much trading costs as possible to make the results realistic. In fact, I have said many times, people of Earth, that my real world results are actually better than my backtesting results. Why? Because I build in trading costs. Why wouldn't you? Apparently, some people don't. I don't know why. I can't speak for anyone else but myself. So, just saying it again, when I send spreadsheets to you or I talk about spreadsheets, those are based on TradeStation numbers. I want real-world TradeStation numbers in the past or real-world MT4 numbers in the present to be better than the spreadsheets that I talk about. That would make me happy. Wouldn't it be fun to look at something on a spreadsheet, become comfortable with how it performs, and then do better in real life, right? I think that's a good thing. So anyway, I was just doing some updating on my accounts today. Uh, I did this just for this webinar. And I just wanted to show you what in the freak I'm talking about. Here are some recent examples, right, on the Euro Aussie. I have what I think on a spreadsheet. And then I compared that to what I got in real life. Okay, with me? Here's a trade from February 1st, February 2nd, and February 8th, 2017. That's this year, 2017. First trade, my MT4 real life account balance was 25.4% better than what would have been expected on the spreadsheets. That's a lot, right? If you think about that, if you have a $1,000 trade, wouldn't that be your real world results would be 250 bucks better, right? That's pretty good. The trade on February 2nd, my real world trade was 18.9% better. And my February 8th trade was 25.4% better again, right? Actually, it's 25.8. That was a typo. Another staff member just got fired. Huh, boy, I'm losing them fast. In other words, over, let's just say over 25%, okay? So those are just the recent trades. This has been going on for months and months and months. I've been saying this for months. This is not just recently. Now, not every trade, especially when you have a little spread variance, not every trade in real life beats it. But overwhelmingly, I have just been getting 
way better results in real life than I do on the spreadsheets. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. That's why I'm so interested in spreads and possibly solving this problem on MT4 is that I think I have solved the spread problem and I've been trading it live in some regards since March 2016. So we're almost up on a year and consistently my real world does better. So if you ever ask me for a spreadsheet in your life, keep in mind that this is what I'm talking about. I'm hoping that your, the spreadsheets are not as good as real life. All right. So there's my rant. I have one more thing to talk to you about today. For 22 years, up until June of 2016, you know I was a tennis coach. You may or may not know that I gave speeches every single day. Well, I ran a junior program of very high-ranked kids, and every single day we had a routine. We came in, we hit, we had a little banter, we brought it in, we did some stretching, we did a light jog, and then I gave a speech every single day. Sometimes that speech was a minute, sometimes it was 15 minutes, depending on how passionate I was, every single day. A lot of times it was the same kid, so it wasn't the same speech. A new and different speech every single day, Monday through Friday for 22 years, right? Just so you know, right? And every single private lesson just about got a little speech too. I've been spending time doing these speeches for a long time. Now, because I did that, and it just became a part of my life, I, would, I found myself spending every single day Looking at things, something happened on TV, I would do a speech about it. Something happened in a tennis match, I do a speech about it. Something happened in a lesson, I do a speech about it. Something happened at the mall, I do a speech about it. In other words, I spent my life gathering tidbits about life, and most of my speeches were not tennis related, they were life related, just so you know. So I spent 22 years gathering data, and then as of June 2016, that stopped, right? It's kind of weird, right? There's no one to get up and give a little speech to. It's very strange. But because of that, I've got a lot of built-in tips floating around my head. Because this is what I've been doing in writing down and studying and believing, right? Keep in mind also, just get, getting to know me a little bit. I'm a stranger on the Internet. But when I have free time, I like to test robots and I like to read the best books that have ever been written whether that's current or old or otherwise. I try to be, read the books that will actually make a difference. I try to choose books that when I'm done will change my life in some way. I want hard-hitting books. Those are most enjoyable for me, right? So not only have I been spending 22 years writing little speeches and trying to help people with my little speeches or whatever, I just finished an interview, quote-unquote, and you'll know what that means in time, but I just interviewed, quote, unquote, one of the greatest self-help people I've ever read. And I'm writing a book on it, um, over almost 3,000 words into it. Anyway, why do I tell you this? Well, just to get to know this stranger on the Internet. But also, I'm going to start putting this information out, right? It's going to start going out there. Um, I'm, going to I'm going to put a post. I'm going to tweet it out. I'm going to do a post today, and it's going on my blog. Um, it has nothing to do with trading but it has everything to do with life, <laughs> okay? So ignore it. Feel free to ignore it. I'm not going to send an email out to my email list on it. I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, something I wrote, I think, you know, I think it was fun to write, but I'm going to start writing ebooks. I already have. I'm going to start making posts uh, on, my, on my blog and also in a new place. But I'm just going to start throwing these I ideas out there. Um, my goal for this is, I'm going to try to throw things out there that can make a difference in your life. I always told my tennis students, one day something I say or something that you do in this tennis group is going to change your life. That's my purpose. That's my goal. Whether it's one way I explain it or another way, I'm going to keep throwing things at you as often as I can until you get it and you make your life better. That's it. Because we never know if today is going to be the day. I say it over and over again. I have to my students. Today might be the day you change your life, and you never know where it's going to come from. So that's been a passion of mine. I don't want it to go away. Um, it doesn't mean I'm going to spend any less time on my robots because obviously that's my sole income, right, the robots and I guess talking about them. Um, but just letting you know, um, a while ago I did the Rise and Shine podcast with Rob and Jason. That was awesome, but it's just not possible to do it anymore. Everyone, 
uh, is doing other things. It may come back, and if they ever ask me, I'd do it again tomorrow. But it's that sort of thing. It's going to be some sort of way that I can give things that I hope will matter to you, and I'm going to get them out there. So anyway, there's my little announcement. Um, I, like I said, I am going to tweet on out a new post today. If you want to look at it, fine. If not, that's okay, too. All right? Um, before we wrap it up, let's see if we have any questions. Oh, we're scrolling back. We're scrolling back. Oh, we had some good questions today. Scrolling back, scrolling back, scrolling. Oh, I think we got a lot of FXCM talk. Oh, I might not be able to get through all these questions. Let's see. All right. Talon feels like he's cursed with brokers. Sorry, Talon. I don't want you to feel cursed. Maybe Oando will be the one. <laughs> Ron's FXCM has six fingers on their right hand. That's funny. FXCM was good with tight spreads, no execution problems. Oh, good. I mean, I know there are good things about it. A lot of people liked it. Ulrich says, uh, the scandal took many years until they kicked the cheaters out. Yeah, that's true. It takes a while to get all the right people in the business. Not losers, but investors. Yes, as Mark. Classic blunders. Land war in Asia. Never cross the Sicilian when death is on the line. It's inconceivable. Right, Ron? That's funny. Never put your money. I'd love to have that conversation. Ha <laughs> ha, Mark. Uh, 30%. Fabian says 30% yearly futures with a 50% draw. Yeah, about a 50% drawdown, Fabian. That's right. Actually, yes, about a 50% drawdown. 30%, 35% a year, about a 50% drawdown. Correcto, says Fabian. He was talking about the Australian dollar robot. Mega trade on futures. What is the account size and trade size? 30 to 50,000. Um, one contract. Um, Richard says, just head for the spread and not take the trade if it is high. Yeah, you could. Absolutely. Another pair is I saw even bigger. Ulrich says he saw even bigger spreads during night. They're fluctuating wildly. Hmm. So that would be another reason why maybe a spread inhibitor might work. <clears throat> Pavel says, great idea. Thank you, Pavel. I want the spread inhibitor. Douglas says, um, <laughs> make a separate email list with your blather. <laughs> Ah, I love Douglas. Douglas makes me laugh. Uh, I want to look at it. Well, tough noogies, Douglas. You'll get what you get when I'm ready to give it to you. I'm sorry, everyone. You had to hear me yell at Douglas like that. I apologize, but he likes to tease me, and I like that. Anyway, here are the latest updates. Um, I got some emails saying, where's the Thursday webinar? Where's the Thursday member webinar? I'm talking to you, Douglas O. <clears throat> Um, this was a direct quote from my webinar two Thursdays ago. I said, no Thursday webinar next week. So either A, you didn't listen to me, so go sit in the corner, or B, you didn't make it all the way to the end of the recording, or C, you just ignore me in general, which is perfectly fine. Um, so I did tell everyone there wasn't a Thursday webinar, but some people didn't get that. So I'm very, very sorry. I, I really am sorry that you missed it. Um, I was worried about that. Um, but anyway, we're back, and we'll be back for the foreseeable future. So sorry for any mix-ups. February course is launched. If you're interested in what, everything we're talking about and you don't know what we're talking about, the link is below. I'm going to do a video on this Australian dollar stuff and put it in the course. So if you're a course member, all you got to do is go to the course and get it. If you're not a course member but you'd like to see the Forex stuff that's already in it and the future stuff I'm adding, then just go to the link. Uh, other courses are there too. Um, Programmer has been sick for three weeks, um, several weeks actually, over three weeks. So I'm still waiting on the new trend following robot. I'll let you know as soon as I get it. Um, bonus blog post today, I'll tweet that out. Um, my website is almost done, right? Um, oh, let's just look at it real quick. Look at that. Look at that little sample. Look at that little guy. I'm going to have trading courses there, the ebooks there. If you want my free ebook, you just go there, you can fill out the form, I send you an ebook. Uh, robots are there about me. You can look and read about me. I've got actually pictures of me if you want to know what I look like. Uh, pictures of my students, some of my students, picture of Jill on there. I did some humanizing of myself on there because no one knows who I am. Uh, I'm a trading blog will be there. Um, uh, the new blog where I put all my self-help tips on there. Um, really excited about that. So there's just a preview. It's not live yet. I'm not done with it, um, but I've done hours and hours of work on that. Um, so you'll be able to go to a one, one place to get all the stuff. Won't that be fun? Okay. And YouTube, please subscribe to YouTube if you want to stay updated. There's the contact information. I'm over my budgeted time once again. 
Uh, great to be back. Love being here on Thursdays. Uh, email me with questions. Um, you'll be able to go to my website and email me through there too soon enough. Um, hopefully by next week. We'll see. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next Thursday. Bye for now.